Have you ever wondered what makes an elite physique so special? What is the defining factor that makes guys like David Lade, Alex Eubank and Mike Thurston seem so aesthetic? Well, it's a V-taper look. This is a common theme amongst elite physiques and something that everyone is desperate to obtain. The V-taper aesthetic creates the illusion of a slim waist with broad shoulders and really pumps you up to give you that movie star physique. Now, for those of you who don't know, I started off my journey with such a narrow, almost pencil-like frame and after specifically focusing on bringing up my V-taper back as well as dieting, I managed to create a much wider and aesthetic physique thanks to the V-taper. And in this video, let me show you the complete breakdown on how to build the V-taper back. In terms of exercises, everyone just thinks spam lap pull downs and you'll instantly get a V-taper, but there's a lot more exercises which are very important for building up that V-taper back. While slap pull downs can be great for creating width, there's actually a lot of different areas to build up if you really want to maximize your V-taper. And of course, the shoulders can actually have a really big effect too. So I'll show you all of the exercises needed for both the back as well as the shoulders. To build a wide back, it doesn't get much better than pull-ups. These have been in my lifting routine since day one and you can literally do it anywhere, whether that's on trees, at the gym, or with a 10 pound pull-up bar from Amazon. Pull-ups hit so many different parts of your back and improve your grip strength too. Yet, a lot of people still perform them wrong. You see, many guys start rolling their shoulders or try rushing the movement and just end up with a lopsided pull-up, which is obviously incorrect and can actually lead to injuries or muscle imbalances. Instead, you need to focus on a smooth controlled form and really concentrate on getting the time under tension when you're bringing your body weight back down. You'll want to be fairly explosive on the way up and then control it on the way down. And it should be a smooth movement all in one rather than an erratic mess. But you might be thinking, what if I can't actually do a pull up? Well, there are a few methods to ensure that you can build your way up to your first pull up. And here's what my step-by-step -step process would look like. For the level one stage, I'd recommend trying out wall pull-ups. And if that's too easy, you can progress to dead hangs. And then if your gym has it, use an assisted pull-up machine or do scapular pull-ups. And after going through these stages, you'll be all set up and ready for your first pull-up. Once you're able to hit over 12 pull-ups or so, you can add weight to make things a little harder as progressive overload is obviously key for any aspect of training. Now that you've got the whip from the pull-ups, we can start to focus on the thickness of the back too to give you that broader and much fuller look. The barbell row is a classic and really does help to build a bigger back. However, I actually like to use an incline bench for dumbbell rows and this just provides me with a lot more stability and I can really just target the back without momentum taking over. Now moving on to lat pull downs. Although the pull ups will help to target your lats, I still like to include more of an isolation exercise to hit them. With the lat pull downs, I like to adopt a slightly wider grip outside of my shoulder width and then I'd like to lean back a little bit when coming down on the exercise to fully target my lats and then on the way back up I straighten up and just keep repeating with a mini hold at the bottom and then a controlled release on the way back up. With all back exercises but especially the lat pull downs I use a thumbless grip to minimize my forearms and biceps taking over the lift so it allows me to isolate the back more instead of my arms. Other good exercises to include within your back day could be lower back extensions or cable rows. So that's the back exercises out the way. Now let's run through the shoulder exercises that really give you that pop and give you that, you know, broad V taper aesthetic. So let's get into it. The shoulders are made out of three parts, the front delt, the side delt and rear delts. For the front delt, you can hit these with any type of shoulder press whether that's machine, barbells, or dumbbells. And for your side delts, these are the golden ticket for broader looking shoulders. You can do lateral raises with either cables or dumbbells. Last but not least, the rear delts. These are super underrated as they give your shoulders a 3D look 
and really help with your back structure too. You can target them via rear delt machine flies or you could even do rear delt cable flies. It's as simple as that. That's all of the exercises that you'll ever need for a V-taper back. But of course, still hit chest, arms and everything else too. Look to progressively overload and for the compounds, I'd stick to reps between, you know, five to eight or potentially 10. However, for the isolations, I'd stick to ranges between, you know, 10 to 12. And I'd do around two to three sets for each exercise. Stick to a structured routine with both your training and nutrition, and I'm sure you'll create a V taper back in no time. So yeah, that has been it. And if you wanted to see a complete guide of what supplements to take, in order to maximize your progress, you can click on this video right here. As always, drop a like, drop a subscription, and I'll catch you next time.